Hi guys, welcome to the seventh episode of how to make a Roblox rig series. In today's episode, I will be showing you how to add IK. So we're finally going to be making use of these two bones on each arm and leg. So let's get started. So let's start with the legs because that's usually where you learn how to do IK first. Don't, people usually don't use arm IK. Uh, I know I don't. But as you might, but if you might, but if you want to make a rig for animation, leg IK is crucial. Um, so if this is just a GFX rig for you, then IK really does not matter. Um, it's still useful, but yeah, for this one, this is more for the animators. So just a demonstration of how IK works. You select the target bone and when you move it up and down, you will see that the legs move along with it. It's a very useful way of positioning arms and legs. And the pole target is a fancy way of rotating it around. That's why we added a pole uh, bone. So we're gonna be learning how to set this one up. So selecting our lower leg bone, what we're gonna do is go to the bone constraint properties. I'm gonna close this up and I'm gonna add an IK constraint. So it's called inverse kinematics. It is in tracking. So inverse kinematics, just add it right there you see we have an IK constraint. So make sure the target is the armature and make sure the pole target is also the armature. For the bone, the target should be your left leg IK and for your pole target, the it should be the left leg pole. Okay, so now our character's completely messed up, which is okay. We can totally make do with that. No, we can't. So what we need to do is we need to go and fix this change the chain length to two. All right, there we are. We've sort of fixed it. But now the bone is facing the wrong direction, as you can see. The bone should be facing this way, but instead it's facing this way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the pole angle right here. So if we just slowly turn it around, you can see that 90 is the way to go. So just change the number to 90, if that's what you need. And as you can see, now it's facing that way. Great. And you can see that if we move around the target, it works. There we are. And if we move around the pole target, yay, it works. So that wasn't too hard, um, but now we need to make it so that it doesn't rotate too much because as you can see, it's going past the bend limit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and select the IK bone now. We're gonna call that the IK bone. Now, the left lower leg, go to the bone properties right here and scroll down to inverse kinematics and just open that panel up. Now, our constraint for limit rotation showed that we needed to limit the Z axis. So right here, we're just gonna go and limit the Z axis as if it's a limit rotation constraint. We have a circle showing this rotation now, so it kind of makes it easier for us. So I'm gonna make it the way our constraint was. So minimum zero and maximum 90. And now, as you can see, it doesn't go past, it's amazing. Let's do this on the arm now. So selecting the left lower arm right here, we're gonna go to bone constraint properties and add an inverse kinematics constraint, change the target and pole target to the armature and change the bone to left arm IK and change the bone of the pole target to left arm pole. Again, everything is messed up. So all we're gonna do is just change the chain length to two. And there we are. The reason why we were changing it to chain length is because it's how many bones it consists to get to the lower torso. So as you can see, if we move up and down the lower torso, it bends these two bones, which is exactly what we need. So to get to this bone, so to get to this bone, we need two bones. So that's why the chain length is two. It's kind of hard to explain, but it works out, so yeah. And it is facing the correct direction, as we can see, because if we move this around, it works. And so does our pole target. Just very amazing, very happy about that. So now let's go and make it so that it doesn't rotate more than we need it to. So in a constraint for the limit rotation, it said minimum was minus 90 on the X axis. So what we're gonna do in bone properties, just scroll down, open up, Invest kinematics, which has already opened up for us, which is amazing. Uh, select limit X, minimum minus 90, maximum zero. And there we are, done. And we're gonna do this on the rest of the lower arms and legs.
Actually, a good example of changing the pole angle is that I need to change it right now from 0 to 180 right here because uh, 0 and 90 degrees didn't work for me. So, uh, yeah, make sure your pole angle is in the right direction. And there we go, IK is done. As you can see, the torso, when it's rotated, the arms do their thing. As you can see, when the lower torso is moved around, the legs and arms do their thing. It's very cool. And all poles work the way they're meant to, which is also very cool. So yeah, thank you for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.